are watching West Hartford Community Television. You're watching West Hartford Community Television. You're watching West Hartford Community Television. For the community, by the community. Is there a gap between church and work life? Is God relevant to our work life? What has God got to do with business? That is the cause and the focus of our conversation today. Don't touch that remote. I'll be right back. Get ready to find hope. Get ready to be inspired. Get ready to discover your full potential. Get ready for total success from the Total Success Coach, Princess Bola Adelani. Hi, this is Princess Bola Adelani, the Total Success Coach, welcoming you to Inspired Success, your monthly dose of inspiration power the program that equips you with the power and inspiration for total success. That is success at work and in life. Yes, that is the million dollar question. Is there, a, is there a gap between church and work life? Is God really relevant? Is he relevant at all to work life? You know, what has God got to do with business? You know, this is, is the focus of my conversation today on inspired success and i am so excited to welcome pastor joel risinga Do, am i saying that correctly risinger but Rissinger. i answered anything okay risinger no <laughs> we'll butcher your name <laughs> to inspire to success to help me to really dig into this conversation so welcome pastor joel thank you princess i'm excited to be with you this is a real blessing so oh you're you. welcome you're welcome it's a it's a pleasure so well First of all, just give um, viewers a bit of a background as far as your, you know, ministry, mm -hmm. you know, your spiritual background, and then your, your professional background as far as it, it relates to the marketplace. Sure. Well, I've been very excited to see God combine those two things. So I'm glad you, you asked the question the way you did. <laughs> yes. um, I, for many years, I went to Bible college right out of high school. Okay. And after I graduated, for about eight years, I was in business. I was in sales and marketing. I did some consulting work. And I thought the whole time, why did I go to Bible college and I'm doing all this? You know, yes. I'm selling software, I'm doing these things. And then um, I did get a call to ministry in about 1992 uh, and went full time at that point. Uh, in the years since, it's been interesting. For the most part, I've been a full time pastor, but there have yes. been some gaps in there where I worked for churches that were too small to, to be able to pay me full time. Mm -hmm. uh, and so I did some tent making, as we might call it. Exactly. And I went back to some of the things that I knew. I, I even joked when we planted the church we're in now, Mill Pond Church in Newington. I, I joked that I should have had a business card that said, Pastor Joel Rissinger, AFAB, anything for a buck. <laughs> not, not really. But I mean, you know, I, I went back to doing some sales and I've done some consulting. And, yes. and today I, I do work part time with an organization called Marketplace Chaplains, which, again, is a perfect combination of that ministry and business background. Yes. Uh, I support people in the workplace, including managers, CEOs, but also employees, uh, spiritually, but also trying to help encourage and coach them, as you do, I know, yes. uh, along the lines of applying their faith at work. And so it's kind of been an interesting journey. I can see God's hand guiding the whole thing and putting together all that diversity into one Into, into one, sort of focus, exactly, right? merging it together. <clears throat> yeah. And that, that would be my... My, my first question is that, you know, is there a gap, though? You know, is there mm -hmm. a gap between church, you know, when we, I'm talking about the global organization, the corporate body of Christ. Right. Is there kind of a gap between, the, you know, church and work life, you know? Mm -hmm. And um, what do you think are some of the factors that might be responsible for that? 
You're right, I think there is a gap. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's sad, really. We, we often tease about that, that uh, everybody's a Christian Sunday morning and then it all ends Monday morning, you know? Yes. And, and, and that's not fair, really, because it's not 100% true. But, but there is that perception and sometimes it, it does seem to be the way we live out life. Um, I think the gap exists. I think there are several reasons for it. Some are external mm -hmm. reasons, sort of expectations of culture. You know, yes. we don't want to talk about God in the workplace. We might offend someone or we don't want to share our faith or make anyone feel uncomfortable because we're talking about what we believe in a way that would be perceived as uh, proselytizing or pushing. Yes. And so uh, the reaction to that is we just, you know, well, let's not talk about it. Let's just clam up. Um, let's yeah. just pretend we're not. And let's separate the two. Let's I separate just, the yeah. two. Yes. Um, I think also internally sometimes even within the church, we create some of our own concerns, our own problems in that regard in that, you know, we don't want to sound like we're worldly or money focused. Uh -huh. We that, don't want to, yes, you know. That is the thing. That was going to be the next thing. Yeah. You know, why do we shy away uh, uh, mm -hmm. from that subject? Mm -hmm. But I'm coming to that. Yeah. And uh, But would, would you say as well that many pastors, many church leaders are not equipped mm. to to really engage that conversation, that subject matter. I, think I don't so. know about your, your seminary, but I don't know whether they, they, they teach things like that mm. in terms of, you know, biblically sound financial mm. planning and empowerment mm -mm. and things like that. I don't know whether that's a subject matter in seminary. If, it ha if I had had <laughs> Dave Ramsey's classes when I was in seminary, I'd be independently wealthy right now, but I'm not. Um, so no, I don't think we do that. And I I think there is a, a separation in the thought process. And a lot of pastors, not all, but yeah. a lot have gone straight from high school to college to seminary yeah. to ministry. Yes. And there isn't that real world, real life work a experience. Experience. Right. experience. And so that might be something that a, a factor mm -hmm. as well that could be contributing to that. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, fast forward to what you just said about, um, you know, shying away from that subject because, yeah. you know, the mindset, the belief is that something, there's something somehow inherently evil mm -hmm. about money mm -hmm. and business and mm -hmm. worldly and carnal that's right. not quite spiritual. Right. But, um, you know, the, the, the hypocrisy of that mindset is that the same you know, churches and, uh, you know, as a church, when we have hold and believe that, mm. we also then, in the very next breath, are asking our congregants for money, for, money, <laughs> for donations, know. you know. <laughs> <laughs> we're yeah. having fundraisers and right. we're having car washes. Right. You know, we're trying to raise money mm -hmm. to pay off the building and all of that. Yeah. So the reality is that, you know, it, it, money is needed. Yes. And, and that they, God has a lot to say about money and our finances and financial management. Um, so why, why do you still think then that there's no true, authentic acknowledgement and empowerment when it comes to that, even though we, we do need money on the other and they're right. asking for money. Yeah, it's just such a double-edged sword. You know, <laughs> Jesus did say, blessed are the poor. Paul did say money is a root of all evil. Yes. Uh, you know, we think of those things and we say, oh, well, then we better not pretend to be or, or talk yes. about money too much, uh, or at least we don't want to be rich. Yes. Uh, in some cases, there's a pride in poverty. Yes. You know, yes. well, I'm broke, therefore I must be spiritual. Exactly, well, you know, exactly. You know, unlike exactly. Jesus, he was homeless, so am I. Yeah, you know. yes. And, and I think there's there's uh, it's neither poverty poverty nor riches that yes. determine spiritual maturity. Yes, you know, exactly. I know you know we that. Know that. Yes. Uh, and, and yet we we get into that mentality. I think you know we have jokes about uh, like you said when the pastor pastor then comes to church and on the one hand we don't want to talk about money or promote it or sound like we're too in, interested in success yes. physically or you yes. know carnally however we would put it. But then we're asking for money Sunday morning and. Now, one of my favorite jokes is where you know the one dollar bill is talking to the fifty dollar bill. <laughs> the one dollar bill says, "So oh, how you been? What have you, you been up to?" And the fifty says, "Oh, I've been to France. I've been to Germany. I've been in five star hotel. It's wonderful. I'm having a great life. What about you?" And the one dollar bill says, "Well, I get around too. I've been to the Methodist Church, the Baptist Church, <laughs> the Assemblies of God. I mean, you know, yeah, exactly. and that's that's the sad uh, yes, flip side of the whole exactly. thing. Exactly, and, and the popular adage where they say, "As poor as a church mouse." Right, you right. Know, so church and poverty and all of that is kind of synonymous yeah. but then you know we know that the reality is that we do need um, those the financial resources right. for the gospel to move forward That's for it right. to advance right. for us to exist and um, you know that it, it, we need to get to this place where we need to 
really fill the gap right. for our congregants. And, um, you know, because there's some adverse effects that I have personally observed. I don't know whether you've observed that. And for me, what, one of the things that I've observed, you know, is the this yeah, just throngs and th influx of people flocking towards, you know, all these new age gurus, mm -hmm. self-help gurus, yes. um, because they're looking for, you know, self-empowerment, right. you know, personal empowerment, right. you know, to grow in the workplace, to grow in their business, you know, and the, since the church isn't feeling, feeling that need, many of them are running there. And that's and so sad. So sad. And, and then they're getting things that aren't true. Exactly. Mixed in, mixed with, in with the truth. You know, right. it's all mixed up there and it's not really truth. You know, yeah. so they're, they're, they're opening themselves up to all, you know, yeah. everything that is really, un, you know, non-biblical. Yeah. And um, so, you know, are, are there other kind of adverse effects that you have, um, yeah. you know, observed? Yes, as, as absolutely. That's a big thing, and 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 it, and it does impact other areas of life beyond just their their finances or, or business. It affects them spiritually. It affects their ability to understand and even look to things like the scripture in a balanced way. Yes, um, yes. And, and sadly, it isn't just congregants. It isn't just the average Christian that's yeah. uh, pulled in that direction. Sometimes yeah. some great Christian leaders even have been. I'm not going to name names, yeah, of course. but there are people who have you've seen over the last 10, 20 years their teaching shift exactly. away from some of the traditional exactly. foundations. Exactly. Truths of the gospel, exactly. Because it's more popular to talk uh, about sort of new age philosophy. Yes, yeah. yes. As far as church philosophies are concerned, I've seen two school of thoughts. You know, there are two kind of camps here. There's the one that is very extreme, that has really more or less reduced God into this Santa Claus or a Vegas slot machine. Mm -hmm, you know, mm -hmm. kind of put in your dollars here and roll this dice right. and here, voila, you become a millionaire. Right. And then, you know, there's the other extreme that don't want to absolutely have anything to talk about money and, and, and you know, um, and it kind of, you know, um, you know, pitching this idea that poverty is synonymous with piety mm -hmm, of mm -hmm. some sorts. You know, so th those are kind of the two extremes and I can, I can, un I, I can understand why some more conservative church communities, you know, would mm. shy away from right. the whole work life and self empowerment mm -hmm. um, because they don't want to be put into that, mm -hmm. into that box, into that category. And, and so what are some of the, you know, more healthy, balanced ways we can really mm. approach this subject matter? Oh, and, that, um, yeah. you know, and, 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 and I'm sure you're aware of my Call to Destiny Summit that's yeah. coming up on Friday, April 24th yes. at Central. Um, Connecticut State University in um, New Britain, Connecticut, and it's a parachurch program that is designed to close close that gap. You know, so kind of talk to me yeah. about some of the healthy, balanced way that we can bridge the gap mm. and and provide tools and strategies for for faith driven uh, entrepreneurs yeah. and professionals, yeah. and um, really watch our influence and affluence grew in the marketplace. Yeah, I'm so glad that we're talking about this because um, that is exactly what has to happen. I've always told my churches, when you see extremes, yes. uh, draw a line in the middle and you'll <laughs> find Jesus standing there waving, right? <laughs> and when it comes to this subject of, of business and faith in the workplace, yes. you take those extremes you just described very well, yeah. draw a line down the center and you've got a wonderful balance. There are so many things that mm. we believe. And in fact, even historically, you know, we talk about the Christian work ethic. Mm -hmm. In many ways, it's what made this country so great. Absolutely. Um, that there are many principles interwoven into that idea that create this tremendous balance. And, you know, I've mentioned to you John Maxwell. I'm pursuing yes. um, certification with the Maxwell Group. Um, and part, part of the reason I'm pursuing that is John is someone who's been able to teach leadership around the world. Inc. Magazine called him the number one leadership guru in the world. And he teaches Christians, he teaches non-Christians, he yes, teaches executives, yes. he teaches employees. Yes. He, he does it in a way that's that's acceptable to all, yeah. but he's also very open about the fact that every yeah. principle he teaches comes it's right out right of the from, scripture. Exactly, right. exactly, exactly. Yeah. So that's an example of the balance. Yes, it's right. the balance. He's having that unique ab ability to take the principle and not 
just not just looking at the Bible as a mm -hmm. religious book, right. as a spiritual book, but also re re um, seeing that it is an invaluable book as mm -hmm. far as principles mm -hmm. for everyday living as success is concerned. The book of Proverbs is full of wisdom. That's right. You know, that even the New Age jazz, you know, re reference, mm -hmm. they reference a lot of their principles. Mm -hmm. They take it out of the pages of the Bible, you know. And so it is, you're absolutely right. It's having that unique ability to say, you know what, this is coming straight from the Bible, but then delivering it in a way that is relevant, mm -hmm. that is practical, mm -hmm. and that can be easily understood by everybody. Yes, you know. That's it. And so, yeah, I agree with you that John is one of uh, the leaders. You know, definitely yeah. in, in in being able to do that. But then, when we come to um, and then there's of of course Dave Ramsey. Dave Ramsey that is you, another you one. Mentioned, you know, and those two are friends. They work together a lot. You yeah. know, because they both agree on yeah. uh, this balanced principle of being able to provide truth in a way that's relevant to all. Uh, not be ashamed of where it came from, yes. but present it in a way that everyone can receive it. And then it doesn't sound so, uh, I think you and I on the phone the other day were talking about the fact that some people are so heavenly minded, they're no earthly good. <laughs> exactly. You know, present it in a way that's practical, pragmatic, understandable, and, uh, and that you and can use. Yes, yeah, and it actually applicable. bears fruit. Yes, and, and I think that's one of the, the drawbacks as well in terms of the church. Mm -hmm. You know, and that's why they're the other extreme, they go to the other extreme trying to make God relevant, but then, you know, over overdoing it, mm -hmm. you know. And, and so it, it's also like we, you're saying, just finding that balance that God sometimes then become irrelevant. Right. You know, so to right. people, they're thinking God is just a spiritual, heavenly person yeah. and Christianity yeah. has all to just do with afterlife. Right. Totally irrelevant to uh, uh, yeah. um, this life. Right. And... Um, <laughs> You know, yeah. and and so you know, they 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 they, they don't really they, they they think the Bible is an antiquated yes. book. Yes, I, I had a, I a great example that I did a presentation at our Chamber of Commerce in Newington uh, yeah. back a year or two ago on conflict resolution, and we talked about ten steps to resolving conflict with employees, with clients, with within a family, a marriage, etc. It was yeah. just sort of a general conflict resolution presentation, but I tried to make it business friendly because most of them are business owners. Afterwards, some people come. Oh, that was great. Why, you know, that was. Where did you get that? And I said, yeah. Well, quite frankly, every one of those points, every one of those steps I talked about, come right out of the scripture. Really? Yes. Yeah. You talk about that stuff in church? <laughs> yes. Yeah, we exactly. kind of do. And that's to your point. That's exactly. Exactly. The problem. Exactly. That's exactly it. And and I think the more we can do that, mm -hmm. the more we can really do that without also reducing God, mm -hmm. you know, into that Santa Claus, you know, but still do that and find. Uh, you know, healthy doctrinal, mm -hmm. you know, balance. I think the more attractive, the more God will seem relevant and the more attractive right. the whole faith thing will seem to people. Yeah, absolutely. You know, and, oh, and the more we will be able to reach, you know, mm -hmm. reach cr people for Christ. And so now let's come to this program, this parachurch program yes. on Friday the 24th, I'm uh, which, by about the way, it. save the date, yeah. you know, and which is kind of designed to help to um, bridge the gap, mm -hmm. you know, to close the gap between, um, you know, um, faith and work life mm -hmm. and, and, and a spiritual, um, spirit, you know, people's spiritual life. So what, what, how do you think that um, a program like that is going to be really valuable, even for um, ministry workers, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, you mm -hmm. know, ministry workers, because most times when people think of an event like that, a program like that, they're thinking it's for only faith-driven entrepreneurs mm -hmm. or business professionals. Right. They wouldn't send their ministry staff. Right. And, and, and I have discovered, and I don't know whether you would agree, that there is a spiritual business side. Mm -hmm. There's a business side to our spiritual call and destiny. Absolutely, yeah. And churches have to operate under certain business principles too. So speaking to the ministry leaders, yes. um, I'm a church planter. Our church yeah. was uh, planted about eight years ago. Um, Abs and, and we don't like to talk about this, and it doesn't sound very spiritual. And you know, at church planting conferences, this wouldn't win you many points or get you a standing <laughs> ovation. But the fact of the matter is, if you don't understand basic finance and you don't understand basic management and leadership principles, and and you don't understand that you've got to you know survive and pay bills and so forth, yeah. uh, you have to understand budgeting and some of those things. You won't make it as a church planter. And sadly, eighty percent of church plants fail. Part of the reason is they don't see the relevance of this connection between 
between business yes, and faith, yes. in, even in managing their own church. Exactly. So I agree with you. It's a big deal for everyone, ministry leaders as well as entrepreneurs. Yes, yeah. and because there is, you know, like you're saying, there is a business administrative mm -hmm. side mm -hmm. to, to, to um, the whole right. church business, right. you know. Um, there is, you know, you have to run it, mm -hmm. you know, like a business. You mm -hmm. have to have a business, even though we say it's non-for-profit, mm -hmm. but it is for profit because <laughs> in all labor there is profit. Right. The, the, Maybe the, a spiritual profit, but yeah, it's still exactly profit. Exactly, spiritual right. profit, right. exactly, but it's still profit. And I just want to thank you for doing yeah. this conference. <laughs> I think it's so fantastic you. that you've taken the bull by the horns and said, yes. we're going to do something about this. I mean, that's such a part of your heart and it's really inspiring. So, thank you. So thank you for thank doing you. it. Thank I think you. people thank will benefit. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. I really do. I, I really do. It's really my heart. And it comes from just spending so many mm. years in, in the marketplace mm -hmm. and working, you know, and coming across a lot of faith-based, you know, mm -hmm. professionals who are looking for tools mm -hmm. and just finding that, wow, you know, and they, they're plugged into different local churches. Right. But the church isn't just really meeting that need. Mm -hmm. And um, I saw, I saw uh, myself, I felt that this was a call for me to close that gap because Good. Because, you. you know, uniquely wired to be able to, um, you know, you know, connect mm -hmm. to, uh, those two worlds, those two arenas. You know, but the other thing I was going to um, ask about the um, the business side mm -hmm. to, you know, running, running ministry is also in terms of marketing, in mm. terms of marketing yeah. strategy. And that's going to be one of the subject matters at... Um, the Call to Destiny Summit on Friday, um, April 24th, CCSU in New Britain, Connecticut. And this year actually is going global. Awesome. So I'm going to be live not only in the U.S., but I'm going in October to the United Kingdom and to South Africa. So save those dates if you're in the U.K. I'll be in the U.K. on um, Saturday, October 3rd, and in South Africa on Saturday, October the 10th. You know, so it's so really exciting for awesome. me to watch how um, this God has really expanded, um, you know, um, the, the influence and the opportunity mm -hmm. to really, um, you know, equip mm -hmm. his people. But, you know, what I was saying was that there's the, the, the other aspect about the whole, um, you know, running, you know, church mm. uh, ministry as a business, mm -hmm. you know, we said profitably as a as a spiritual profit, mm -hmm. you know, in terms of souls, mm -hmm. you know, um, is also marketing mm -hmm. in terms of strategy and you leveraging so many technology, mm -hmm. social media, you know, and just the whole marketing branding thing, you know, mm -hmm. which is a huge business strategy, you know, mm -hmm. that um, the church is so behind the curve um, in, in, in leveraging mm -hmm. to really reach their target audience, their mm -hmm. demographic, to, to, sh to preach the gospel, mm -hmm. really, basically, because mm -hmm. that's our call, that's our mission, that's right. you know. And um, so that is uh, also a very uh, a gap I've seen. We're always behind the curve mm -hmm. when it comes to technology, strategy, you know, and it makes God just kind of seem like this old, right. um, outdated, oh, outdated mm -hmm. um, he uh, is not not dynamic, whereas right. God is one of the most dynamic and right. strategic right. beings right. that <laughs> yes. exist. Right. You know, he's strategic, he's intentional, you know, he has he has a plan, he's a God of plan, of mm -hmm. purpose, mm -hmm. of objectivity, you know. And yet um we when we come to church arenas, where I find people of faith church leaders um they're not strategic, they're not intentional, there's no plan, there's no marketing, mm -hmm. there's no, you know, just real organization and, and plan yeah. to really get the gospel moving and in, in, in this day and age. It's, you know? you know, and they blame God for that sometimes. In yeah. other words, it doesn't sound spiritual to say, well, we've got a plan and a strategy and we're, we're, we're a, a, a target demographic. Yes. Oh, that sounds too businesslike. And we ought to just trust God to bring the ones he <laughs> wants to bring and then we'll teach them. Yeah. I've had a pastor tell me that once I asked him about his, his vision for the community. He said, I don't have one. You know, if God brings them to me, I'll teach them. And I thought, well, I'm reminded of the joke we have at home. I'll say to my wife, you know, with the snow, 
leaves, etc. The Lord giveth, the Lord will take away. <laughs> and she and she says, her response is, her response, I'd like yes, to he that. will, but you're his instrument, grab a shovel, right? And, <laughs> right? and so yes. I, I want to say to those pastors, you're right, God has a plan. You're right, yes. God has a strategy. You're part of it. And you need to look at your community and have a, a, a strategy yes. to reach these people. Absolutely. I, I, was, yeah. I was one time, I'm sorry to interrupt, but I had a, a, a congregation I pastored years ago 118 year old church and they'd been in the same community the whole time and yet you could go up and down the street or do an event or whatever and mention the name of the church and most people would say what where who no idea they even existed 118 years in this wow, little community wow. people didn't even know who they were yeah. that tells us that we're not reaching out yes, like we yes, should yes yeah. yes and so that for me that's another one of the major subject matters and the features of the call to destiny summit mm -hmm. the business of destiny the power to mm -hmm. expand your influence mm -hmm. affluence and impact you yeah. know it's going Amen. to be off the chain if i can say that so we're going to be looking at those kind of subjects you know mm -hmm. marketing how a strategy and and we're going to be looking at the spirit you know how to master some of um the call pillars of success, the spiritual dimension, and we're going to be looking at money, money management, practical mm -hmm. tools and strategies to expand your impact, your your influence, and, and your affluence, you mm -hmm. know. So Friday, um, um, April 24th, I look forward to seeing you. There are more information at Royal proclamations.com. Thank you so yes. much, Pastor Joe. We're Thank not you. out of words. Definitely not out of words, but we're out of time. <laughs> I've really enjoyed this conversation with you. I think it is time. It is just it is. around about time for us to step up. Yeah. You know, I feel we, 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 we're we called as transformers and leaders of change. Yeah. And, um, you know, the world, the whole of creation, the Bible says is groaning for the manifestations of the sons of God. That's right. And it's time for us to step up and fulfill that call as leaders of change, as transformers, as change agents, you know, and, 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 and really still do the work of the big kingdom, of the work of the ministry, of evangelizing, but really knowing how to leverage modern tools and strategies mm -hmm. to teach the same message that's you right. know that's right and so really it has been fun yes, having that thank conversation you. with you yes. and um, i really thank you and i look forward to your input as well on on the 24th at i'll the, be there at the summit and i look forward to seeing you there this is princess bola adelani the total success coach reminding you to keep smiling hey put a smile on your face life's too short keep learning <laughs> keep networking keep believing and keep on keeping on you're on the winning side i'll see you next month take care and god bless bye